Hi, my name is John Sunman, and this is the fourth and final segment of my conversation with the molecular biologist and synthetic biologist George Church in his laboratory office at Harvard Medical School in March of 2015. In this section, I asked George to give his thoughts on science and those people who don't buy into it in particular fundamentalists and anti-science people. I hope you enjoy our conversation and uh, leave your comments uh, below or send me an email. Um, this concludes our first conversation. I did have another conversation with George about two weeks after this. I don't have video for that, but I do have audio and perhaps I'll put it up as a podcast somewhere in the future. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I hope you'll check out my novels, which are based on the some of these themes that we talked about. Acts of the Apostles, Cheap Complex Devices, The Pains, and Biodigital. Okay, so long. I like to make my contribution to help right. people think about these things right. without being polemical or didactic. I yeah. like to tell just interesting stories, yeah. but they also get people yeah. thinking about stuff. So I've just been musing on the, the various meanings of that phrase, creation science, yeah. right. and how much it, it means something totally different to you yeah. than it does to Dr. Dino, who's yeah. got right. this... And, and it's funny, the, the, do you know what young earth creationism is? I uh, sure do. Right, yeah, right? Actually, it, I, I know quite a bit. Yeah, yeah okay. So, so and, and their whole model, it, 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 they have this, it, it accounts for things in the geological record by something that sounds, to me, naively, yeah. Yeah. like the expansion that's required by the Big Bang Theory, yeah. right? So you right. had this period where it starts like this, and then it goes whoop like that, and then it goes out like this again, yeah. right? And yeah. so they have this, they have like this expansionistic uh, yeah. period it yeah. allows like 10 million billion or however yeah. many billion years of Earth history to take place over 6,000 years. Because it starts with the premise that the Bible is correct. Yeah. So you start with that and then you retrofit yeah. all the evidence back into yeah. that. And it's, a, it's actually a very common scientific uh, trick is, is to start with a set of premises and right. see what you can explain. Yeah. And then the scientific theories that explain the most, then you accept their premises. Right. right? It's kind of in reverse, right? right? First you accept the premises and go forward, and then you see what it explains, and you go right. back and you say, all oh, those things, that's really good premises. Right. Right. You know, like Schrodinger's wave equation, you know, that isn't something that we experimentally determined. Right. It's we had a certain premises that led to the certain quantum mechanics, which led to a whole lot of explanations. Right. And I think the problem, the reason evolution keeps churning is it, it, A, is there once was a very powerful theory. And, and it still is, which was based on, you know, uh, uh, influential senior members of tribes yep. having visions, which yep. they which they were probably quite real to them or yep. or helpful in in some sense, and uh, and they explained so much, you know, like Greek mythology explained so much about thunder and yeah. and waves and so forth and human that, behavior and, and that it was very valuable. It was uh, just so stories that that uh, were way more valuable than ignorance. Yep. And then, so like a new drug, it's not that the new drug has to work; has to work better than the old drug, right? right? And so, it's not always the placebo control; it's the control of the previous drug. And the fact is that that evolution doesn't explain that much that's right. valuable to the average person, right? right. So, you know. Newton versus Einstein, you know, you could you can say, oh, well, my atomic clocks work better right. than the Newtonian clocks, right? right. And that can, and you can demonstrate that to enough businessmen that they that they buy into it, and the, and the average person doesn't care, right? right? But the average person needs to explain, you know, the thunder and the lightning and why their kids are born the way they are and stuff like that. Right. And science doesn't do a great job of it yet. Uh, right. And so I, you know, I kind of cut them some slack on it. It's right. like evolution will have arrived as a science. You know, I don't believe this stuff is always just a theory, but I think yeah. it will arrive as a practical science for everyday people when it explains the stuff they care about. Right. And one of the ways that, that I think that I'm contributing to this is I'm creating companies that depend on evolution. Right, right, right. right. Just like there are companies that depend on atomic clocks, like right. GPS companies. Yeah. I'm creating companies that depend and so some creation, you know, young earth uh, yeah. creations will be punching a clock at right. one of my companies <laughs> doing evolution. They'll go home to their kids and they'll say, hey, I did some great evolution today. And right. 
no, Dad, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're still 6,000 years old, but yeah. you know, I did my thing. And to some extent, they actually like my message. They right. say, see, George is saying that is all intelligent design. Right. Right. You know, yeah. what we do today <laughs> is intelligent design. It's right. evolution yeah. that we are in control of. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's not it's not completely blind evolution. Right. right. So anyway, I, I think that's well, what bothers me. To about me, it. that's not really anti science. You know, the anti science part is not is when you say, uh, oh, well, this Geiger counter has been constant for ever since we invented Geiger counters, but it must have gone at a different rate when right. we weren't looking. You know. Right. Yeah. That's a little anti-science. Well, yeah. I, I think uh, anti-science is, you see a lot in our Congress today. Like, we're going to cut funding for anything that researches things that upset our worldview. And, you know, things that might control, like, the fate of, you know, people who depend on water to live, for example. Or, or you know. Yeah, so, so I think, so I think this, this is where scientists fail in that they're not good, often not good businessmen or politicians. Right. They have to come up with the story, right. the the science fiction story, yeah. that not the dystopic science fiction stories, but the utopic science fiction yeah. stories, where this funding results in this result, which maybe it disrupts our world, but it disrupts the bad parts of our world. It right, disrupts right. the tuberculosis mm -hmm. and the malaria and the, the poverty of our world. And this is how it plays out. And you have to connect the dots very compellingly, as right. you might in right. your novel, right. want to have very few gaps and then a miracle occurs in the middle right. of your novel, right? right? And so I don't think we do that very well. And that's the reason that Congress, A, is not composed of scientists and B, doesn't vote with scientists, right? right? It's because we don't tell the stories very well. Right. Um, well, I think, I think the problem is actually deeper than that. I just yeah. think that when people get addicted to their worldview and I think science has borne this out that, that, that you can't you can't convince somebody with the facts if they've got it set in their head you know like no, I disagree you, I yeah. think you, 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 you well I partially agree I think you can convince people with objects not right. with not with arguments right so in other words if I say I've got an iPhone right you know I can or talk an Android to people, yeah uh, do you want this or do you want to stick to your current world yeah. work view yeah and they'll say oh I want that right, right. and they'll yeah. say eh, forget about you know, what I said last year about telecommunications being overrated and yeah. what I said about people being addicted to electronic, I, you know, I want it. Yeah. And so the way you, I think the bit, main way that people are influenced ultimately is not, um, is not the humanities. I mean, it's, it's part of it. I mean, yeah. you have to construct some arguments occasionally, yeah. you know, uh, uh, some of them, uh, parodies, you know, uh, you know, you can use humor, you could use solid logic, but in the end, the reason that Britain displaced Spain was not because the British literature was better, it's because the British boats were better. Right. And the reason <laughs> that the United States displaced Germany is because we had, or, or yeah. Japan, yeah. is because we had bombs. Uh, but, you know, you know, it's it, it's a, it's a combination, but it's heavily influenced by having the right technology and the right market strategy. Right, right? and we're terrible. We're much better at technology development than our marketing. Right, and you know, I, I think Einstein said, that, or actually, probably many uh, humanitarians and scientists have said that our our technology is going faster than our humanity or our ability to interpret and and uh, cope with. But I think it's I think it's also the case that how we market it is yeah. failing as well. Right? You know how we get it so that the technology interfaces with the humanity is missing as well. Yeah. Well, I, I just get depressed when I think about the phenomenon of fundamentalism because fundamentalism has very similar traits wherever it pops its head, whether yeah. it's Islamic fundamentalism yeah. or Christian fundamentalism. Yeah. It, it it has to do with. Uh, you know, male supremacy and domination yeah. has to do with authoritarianism. Yeah. It has to do, you know, they, and they like there's well, eight or ten checklist because, things. Well, it, it's yeah. true, but it's it's like it's because we haven't marketed to them yeah. uh, something that's better. Right. In other words, if if they want to have servants, 
we have not provided them with alternative servants. You know, right. we haven't provided robots, let's say, right. that, that give them everything they want. And you know, quite frankly, if we can't convince the Amish to adopt, you know, right. gas guzzling automobiles and time guzzling right. iPhones, why should they? Right. Wait, wait, why wait. should they move? Right. And and the same thing with fundamentalists. If we can't provide them with harems. In right. our worldview, right. uh, or, or let us say, just protection of 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 their of women that they care yeah. deeply about. You know that they're worried about, you know, exhibitionism, prostitution, right. rape, you, you name it. Yeah. Uh, that they think that they have a solution for. If we don't provide a plausible solution, right. then we can't complain, or we can complain, but, yeah. but it's not going to get us anywhere. And so, you know, I think rather than dismissing them as... Well, I'm, not, I'm not dismissing. No, I, I know you're yeah, not, but yeah. I'm saying a lot of other people are. They're yeah. saying they're not up to speed. They're yeah. not uh, their history or right. they're disruptive. That's, those are ways of dismissing yeah, or, them that many people would do. You have to say very seriously the way you would say, hey, why is nobody buying my computer, right? right? You know, uh, well, when I bought into my first computer, the reason nobody was buying them is because they were the size of this building, right? You right. Know? And you couldn't they, do anything with them. <laughs> do anything, and they didn't work. Um, and so they were a failure, right? Right. Rightly so. So I, I don't, I, I think anti-science usually means that sci it, science hasn't come up with a marketable product that appeals to that particular right. culture. And, uh, and it may never. I mean, it could be, you know, we evolved... We evolved in um, to be in a pre or barely ag agrarian culture, right? And it's not surprising that our DNA bubbles up into us and says, "I don't need rockets, jets, fast cars, cell phones. It's right. not in my DNA. I don't right. need it." It's amazing how many of us need it. Right. You know, it's it's amazing how we can do differential calculus when our ancestors <laughs> really didn't even need to add, you right, know? Right, To me, it's amazing that we... Have, so, so the surprising thing is not the fundamentalists. It's all the non-fundamentalists. Right, right, right. Those are, the, those are the ones that are not selected for yet. Right. right. We're, 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 the, we're some aberration, right? right. Uh, maybe a good one, but, but we yeah. need... It is the obligation of the next... of the generation who thinks it's the next generation. Yeah. To make a good marketing pitch to all the ones that are properly adapted to what evolution works for right. hundreds of thousands of years to achieve, right? Here we are. In 20 years, we suddenly think everybody should use Google, right? right. You know, right. is that right? Well, just going back to like my, you know, my preoccupations and hobby horses. Yeah. You take uh, the 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 worldview of ISIS. And give them the technology of Stuxnet, or yeah. or the or the ability to engineer uh, yeah. viruses that select for yeah. whatever you know yeah. the the old you know find yeah. all the Aryans and kill them, or find all the black people and kill them. Yeah. And and uh, so when you when you take, as you were saying at the beginning of this conversation, you take the the, the this technology has you know almost infinitely amplified the power of individuals. Yeah. Right? right, and so if you give them a really, yeah. uh, you know, pathological worldview and yeah. all this power, it gets scary, right? Yeah. And and then I, you know, I go call my own other hobby horses, in, in our own country with all the benefits that we've had, that we've got, you know, a Congress that insists on sticking its head in the sand and saying, you know, we don't care about simple economic theory. We don't care about simple scientific theory about you know, droughts and weather and climate. Yeah, we don't, right. you know, and it's just like, if we can't get ourselves together yeah, yeah. To, to accept uh, reality, yeah. what are the chances of somebody in Syria right now with a gun against his head is going to, you know, so. No, I think it's, I, yeah, I think there are analogies. Uh, and if, if, if those people who believe that science and technology is on the right path. Uh, believe if they believe that, then they they need to ask themselves, what are they providing to the anti global warming, anti GM crops folks at right. the far right and far left? Yeah. 
if they can't think of anything, right. then pretty much that's that's it. You right. know, game over, go right. home. Right. Uh, but if you can think of something, and we have thought of a lot of things that they use, you know, right. it's, you know, we're really always we we're kind of always in a dystopia because everything that's utopian in our world we take for we granted. We take it for granted. Right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> the fact that I don't need to worry about my clothes and, right, right. and pretty much don't worry have to worry about infectious disease and you know I you know I get access to the world's information anytime right. I want it. Yeah. That to me is zero. You know, that's right. that's like zero. And then you turn on just, the tap and clean water comes yeah, out. Yeah, clean water. Yeah, exactly. I don't even need bottled water. You yeah. know, like, or I get bottled water. So, and that's you know, that's the that's the reason we always feel like everything's wrong is because we were designed again right. by hundreds of thousands of evolution to to reset. Yeah. To reset, and it goes both ways. If we have a terrible life, we are reset back down to, to right. that point, right. and that will feel normal. Right. You know, uh, up to some point, yeah. you know, well, I, and to some extent, different people have different set points. You know, some people, no matter how much they get, they're right. always bummed out. Right. And there are other people that are really Pollyanna, you know, yeah. they, you know, they lose a few limbs and they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> let me, let me go out and help my fellow veterans. So, yeah, you know, yeah. also lost their legs yeah. to, to recover yeah. and, you know, and, and, uh, um, yeah, I think. Yeah, the sort of forces of anti-science are basically market feedback. Yeah, we are not producing things that are valuable to everyone, and in fact, to very important people. So, very important people include poor, disenfranchised, politicians right. uh, around the world, and people with guns. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. If you're not reaching those people. You are putting yourself at risk, yep. your and your children, and I and and I, this is you know this is a place where, um, you know I, I have some ideas. I don't have the solution, but right. you know a few things. Like I think if we eliminate malaria, that's going to win yep. a lot of hearts and minds, yep. right? Because they're going to see that uh, six hundred thousand people a year are not dying. A bunch of people are not losing days from work and, and, and days taking yeah. care of other people that uh, uh, they're desperate. And uh, maybe there'll be some some pay it forward that comes out of that. Um, if you produce you know, pharmaceuticals that actually make people feel better than shooting makes them feel, yeah. maybe they'll take those pharmaceuticals <laughs> rather than shooting, right? Yeah. You know? You know, I can't describe exactly what the chemical composition of that pharmaceutical is, yep. or, or the electrode yep. array if it's yep. a, if it's electronic. But I think they're out there. Yep. Uh, um, uh, you know, what do the politicians want? You know, how are you going to convince them global warming is a good thing? Well, you know, let's say the mammoths yep. are a solution to global warming. Yeah, maybe they can accept that. You know, because yep. it's it's warm and fuzzy and does no harm. Yep. You know, yep. 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 Well, of course, their kids are. their kids love it, and so. If you can find win-win solutions, they'll right. accept it. They may never accept global warming. You know, we yeah. may actually cure global warming before and then people even acknowledge before it. Before they acknowledge it, and they'll say, "See, I told you so." It's right. like Y two K. Right. See, there was never a Y two K problem. Right. 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 You guys panicked. Right. You you spent billions of dollars on this <laughs> non-problem. Okay. And, and, and in fact, this is the this is the really the curse. Of the safety conscious right. visionary, right? Is, no car crash happened. Therefore, right. right. The the better you are at envisioning all the problems of the future and fixing them, not yeah. just Cassandra, but actually preventing, yeah. the less successful you are. Right. Does that make sense? You. It's hard to prove that you did something valuable. Right. Right. right? right.